This is Phil Kopman with a presentation on software safety for vehicle automation. The scope of this talk is Software Safety Needs for Automated Driving Systems, ADS. Compared to conventional vehicles, software-based system safety needs for ADSs change due to a variety of factors. Those include changing validation approaches, changing relevance of perception defects on safety, changing role of the human driver, changing computing architecture used to implement the system, changing safety expectations and accompanying standards and the potential for regulation. To create an ADS that will be accepted by all stakeholders requires two significant changes compared to classical automotive design. The first is software and system safety have to become core competencies of the system integrator rather than being delegated to the supply chain. You can't outsource safety for an automated vehicle integration project. The second big requirement for success is a significant investment in people, skills, and processes for both system engineering and safety engineering, which includes establishing a robust safety culture. A significant appeal to automated driving system technology is the potential to dramatically increase safety compared to human drivers. There's no question that the industry is aggressively selling ADS technology based on this potential to be safer. Here's an example from the Waymo Voluntary Safety Self-Assessment Report, VSSA, that says we're building a safer driver for everyone. It's unmistakable that they believe that this technology will make driving safer. The question is, what will it take for that company or any other company to actually deliver on that promise? ADS technology differs from conventional vehicles in that a computer system is responsible for driving the vehicle and ensuring driving safety. This happens by having a set of sensors feed into some computers. The computers build a model of the external world and make decisions such as planning a path that will not collide with any other road users and send commands to vehicle controls to make the vehicle move safely. The amount of data that needs to be moved through sensors, run through the computation cycle, and used to create control commands for the vehicle is absolutely huge. The data processing required is right at the feasibility limits of what can be put in the car and produced at scale. Perhaps the most difficult challenge in creating ADS technology is the step in which sensor inputs are used to build a model of the outside world. Traditional computational techniques to do things such as deciding which part of a camera image corresponds to a person have struggled for decades and only become practical recently with availability of significant computing power in the form of GPU-based processing. That processing power has enabled the use of machine learning and in particular deep neural networks to do classification. This graphic sketches out how that works. The idea is that a huge number of examples of things, in this case faces, which some human has labeled as this is a face, here's where it is in the picture, are used with a deep neural network structure. You can see multiple layers with interconnections to train that system to detect what faces are. It does this in this case with the convolutional neural network, which does feature extraction and then builds up at each layer to more and more things that look like face. And finally at the output says, this is a face or this is not a face. The key idea here is that rather than a human programmer instructing the computer on what a face is, Instead, this neural network structure is trained based on huge numbers of examples to statistically figure out what things are faces and what are not. The good news is that this enables us, for the first time, to with pretty good reliability be able to say, yes, that's a person, that's a stop sign, that's a car, and so on. The bad news is that this is a statistical approach. And it may struggle to get better than something like 99% accuracy. That's great for IT applications where 99% is fantastic. 
it struggles when you get into life-critical system safety, which needs much, much higher reliability than that. A particular challenge is being able to prove that this type of computational approach is actually as good as you need it to be. A pervasive feature of the ADS market has been the so-called race to autonomy. Here's a leaderboard from 2017. And a couple things to notice are, first of all, many of those names have changed since 2017, with some names both coming and going between 2017 and 2021. But another thing to notice is that all except one plan to have products released in 2021. And for most of them, that has not happened. What we've learned since 2017 is that in 2021, it's going to take a long time to deploy the technology. And even those few companies who can say they've deployed now are doing so at very limited scale. And it's clear that it will take quite a while to scale up this technology to be pervasive. An important takeaway from this is that any strategy based on, well, we need to get this out this year or next year, so we're going to skip steps or we don't have to worry about certain things, is unlikely to work out. This technology will take a long time to both be deployed and to scale up. Beyond the purely technical issue of figuring out how to make machine learning-based systems that can be validated to be safe enough to trust with human life, there's also an organizational issue of integrating and validating the immense complexity of these systems. Recently, Volkswagen released the ID3 vehicle, and it had numerous software problems. A quote from the press is that it's worse than reported and, quote, it is an absolute disaster. Some follow-up reporting said that an internal source from Volkswagen explained that ID3's software issues were mostly due to lack of qualified personnel. What's going on here is that not only do we want to create a purely computer-based driver, but also that drives tremendous architectural changes inside the car, some of which have to do to a move to electric vehicles, but in general has to do with a change from many distributed, relatively small computers to big computing complexes that have lots of different pieces of car functionality put onto the same computing platform. That creates a huge integration and validation issue that was previously managed by suppliers, but now ends up in the laps of the system integrators. For the most part, the system integrators are having a tough transition to acquire the skill set and the personnel to make this happen. In the face of pushing the limits of computational capability using new algorithmic approaches that are difficult to validate, and the pressure to manage increasingly more complex software in terms of integration and validation, it's essential to remember that no matter the perceived pressure to get to market quickly, the true winner has to be safe. This lesson was brought home in 2018 when the Uber testing program resulted in a fatality in Tempe, Arizona. The press attributed this to terrible software design decisions. For example, the National Transportation Safety Board said the system did not include considering that some people might not cross at designated intersections. A more general finding by NTSB was that Uber lacked a robust safety culture Uber responded by putting significant resources into defining and improving a robust safety culture. However, in the end, that wasn't enough. By 2020, Uber had offloaded their entire development and test organization and exited the business of designing automated vehicles. Successfully creating and deploying an acceptably safe ADS requires addressing challenges across a number of different topics that are covered in different sections of this talk. Those include validation approaches, building trust, setting acceptable safety expectations, revisiting the role of the human driver, understanding how to create life-critical safety for sensors and perception systems, changing to a centralized fail operational computing architecture, coming to terms with whatever standards and regulations may be appropriate, and revisiting the required qualifications of personnel, which almost certainly includes significant education, training, and retooling of the workforce.